Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make custom brushes in Procreate. This is a free preview lesson from my new class, Inky Maps, Procreate Edition, now on Skillshare. If you like this lesson, if it helps you and you want to learn more about my process of making illustrated maps in an analog inspired retro style, you can check out that class at Skillshare. You can find a link to that class in the video description or head over to tomfroze.com slash teaching and find it there. When you use my links, you get 30 days of free membership on Skillshare and that gives you access, of course, to my class and all other classes on the platform. I hope you enjoyed this free preview. This lesson is called Making Your Stamp Brushes in Procreate. All right, it's time to start making some stamp brushes out of our inky bits, and that's what we're gonna do in this video. So I'm here with my cartographic symbol scans loaded up in Procreate, and I'll just start making a brush out of the uh, water waves here. So some of the steps may seem kind of confusing as we go along, but they all end up getting us to where we want to be, which is ultimately having a stamp brush. So I'm going to go to the layers, and on that layer, I'm going to just invert it. This is going to make white areas black and black areas white. The next thing I want to do is crop in to just one cluster of symbols. So you can go to your wrench tool there or your actions menu and then go to Canvas, and at the top there you see Crop and Resize. We're going to crop this whole canvas down to just one of these little clusters of waves. You can get it as cozy as possible. That should work. And this is where you can see it was important that there was nothing else that was going to be in this particular area of cropping. So I will just hit done. And then we have just those waves. We're now going to do three fingers swiping down to copy. And finally, we'll go into the brushes here. We'll go to the brushes menu. And maybe what we can do is create a new brush library. And I'll just pull up my keyboard here. And we can call this brush library maps. How about inky map brushes? And the next thing we're going to do is hit plus beside brush library up at the right there. And this is where we're going to start actually creating our brush. The first thing we want to do is go down to shape in the sidebar there and go edit. And then we're going to go import at the top right there and go paste. And that's going to paste what was on our clipboard. Hopefully it's still there. And then be sure to tap done. And that gets our first stamp brush shape down. Now, right now it's just a brush. So it's doing this zany thing. We certainly don't want that. So we're going to go over to stroke path and bump spacing all the way to max. This is like the key thing you want to do with a stamp brush is have max spacing. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm noticing that some of the waves are lighter in opacity depending on how I press my pen down. And I want them all to be the same. Uh, I don't want there to be variation in opacity, especially in the style that we're working in. So to change that, you go down to Apple Pencil in the sidebar and there's a setting right at the top here, and it's the opacity, like how much opacity change you get based on pressure. And right now you get the maximum amount of influence on opacity based on your pressure, and you wanna set that down to zero, all the way down to zero. And now all my little marks there are exactly the same opacity. Now we're gonna go back up to shape to try to make a little bit more variation in, in what we're seeing here. So I'm just gonna go down to shape properties and adjust scatter 
And now you can see that there's a little bit of a jitter or randomization of how angled each little stamp impression goes down. I think if you if you make it just like barely perceptible, it will just add a little bit more of a human quality to the work without it being too zany. I think it's possible to be really overly rotated with each one and that just obviously is going to look weird. So I guess one last area of settings we can change is going down to properties. And we're going to tap the top button up there to use stamp preview. That just makes sure that when we're looking at the preview of the brush in our brushes menu, we'll see just the shape of the waves instead of like a brush of the waves. And that will help us identify it more visually. Now we can also influence how big the max size of our brush will be versus how small it can be. Um, this is something you want to play around with a little bit, but I think something like what, what was given already is enough. Like maybe a hundred percent maximum size, maybe a little bit bigger. This just influences what the max size this brush will go down at with your uh, brush size selector or setting. And finally, the maximum and minimum opacity here relates to the opacity slider when you're working in Procreate. So we don't need to change that. Sometimes you might want to change the opacity settings. It's okay to leave that as an option. And finally, if you want to give this brush a name, you can go up to Untitled Brush here and just give it a new name. I'll call this one Water. We'll create a new reset point and save. And that means if we change settings to this brush later, we can always just reset it back to the settings that we just made now. Now we have a few other brushes to make, but it seems that we've cropped them all out. What should we do? Well, all we have to do is just undo that crop and then move on to the next thing that we're going to make our stamp brushes for. So we go back to the canvas size and do the crop this time to the trees. If that's what you like to do, that's what I'll do in my case. And just make sure that's cropped nice and tight and then hit done. Of course, don't forget to copy your image before going into making your brush settings. So in your brush settings, we really want to just use the same settings we did with the water brush. So this time, all we have to do is duplicate that brush and then go in to the shape setting, go edit, we'll go import and paste. And then in this case, my trees get pasted down here. And I'm going to hit done and done again. And this gives me my tree stamp brush. Don't forget to give your new brush its own name. And now I'll just finish my set off of my stamp brushes. All right, so I've made a few stamp brushes that I think I'll be using in my map, but I also want to get those sponge textures in as well. These are also stamp brushes, but they're going to behave a little bit different. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm back in my canvas here and I'm gonna do the cropping in to one of these brushy textures. And hopefully I'll be able to just choose one to rule them all. I think maybe this one right here will be the best. I just wanna make sure I crop in to all of the greeny bits and none of the ones that are surrounding it. So something like that. What I don't want to do is cut it off abruptly because that will show in the brush. Move it done. Copy. And we will use most of the settings from our other brushes. We'll go into shape. We will go into edit, import, paste, don't forget to hit done. And um, with this one, we'll make it slightly bigger. So just so we can see what we're doing here. So we'll go to properties. 
and we'll go maximum size, you know, maybe even like 450%. And min minimum size, I actually don't want it to be too small. Maybe even I'll try going as high as 30%. And now with this one, I want more control over what angle this goes down on because depending on where I'm using it, I might want to rotate it around very deliberately. So if I clear my drawing pad so I can just see what my textures look like, that one's interesting. If I go to azimuth, this makes it so that depending on how my Apple Pencil is rotated in my hand, it will vary the orientation of that. So that's all I really want is to be able to control that. Now there may be certain sensitivities within this setting that you might want to adjust as well. But for now, I'll try this and see if it works for me. If I need to make changes while I'm making my actual art, I can go into the brush studio and change those settings as I go. So I'll just give it a name. We'll call it sponge and give it a new reset point here hit done and now I have my final brush in my set here so you might be wondering why should we go through all the trouble of making these sand brushes when perhaps we could just copy and paste them directly in our file or even just draw them in by hand that would actually take a lot less time to do, especially the drawing things by hand. But the copying and pasting in Procreate actually is a little bit more cumbersome. And when we're making repeated elements like these mountains and trees, and sometimes the dots, it is a lot quicker in the long run just to have a stamp that does those. This is getting around one of what I find is the limitations of Procreate, and that's rapid cutting and pasting and placing. This is something that's much easier to do in Photoshop, which is where I do most of my work. So getting around that requires making stamp brushes like this. And the great thing is that in the long term, if you plan on making more maps or more projects that use these elements, you have them ready to go in your brush library. Now I haven't forgotten about the textures we made yet. These are going to be used differently. We're not making stamp brushes from them. I'll show you what we're going to do with that in the next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please leave a comment and let me know how. My name is Mr. Tom Froze. I'll see you in the next one.